Hi, I'm Todd Henderson. Today we're going to be installing the Cargo Glide CG 1500XL. This is going on a Ford F-150, but this is a standard installation. It's the same on most trucks. Let's go ahead and get started. Now for our first step, we're going to want to take the entire unit and turn it upside down. We want to find something nice and soft to set it on so we don't mar that finish on the top. Next, we're going to want to get a second set of hands. And what we'll do to release this back paddle is we'll grab a hold of the red turn latch and pull that down. Now we can slide the bottom frame rail free from uh, the subframe rail. Next, we're going to take the bottom frame rail, we're going to lift it up and set it into the bed of the truck. Now, the holes for mounting are going to be down facing the bed, and we're just going to slide it up towards the bulkhead, keep it in between the wheel wells, and then we can center everything. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure this is centered left and right in the bed of the truck, and then we're going to take and slide uh, the head portion up to the bulkhead and make sure that, that is about a quarter inch away from the bulkhead on the driver's side and passenger side. And we want to make sure also that the holes that we're mounting are resting over top of your top raised ridges in the bed of the, of the truck. Now with everything centered, we're going to go ahead, each one of the holes that we're going to be drilling into, we're just going to want to take a marking device like a Sharpie, go down and make a quick mark on the bed of the truck, and then we can slide the frame back and drill some pilot holes. Next, you want to take a center punch or another sharp, sharp object like a hardened nail and make a nice little spot to keep the drill bit from moving around. We use a smaller drill bit, make our pilot hole. All right, now that we've got our pilot hole drilled, we're going to take our 7 16 drill bit and finish it off. Now what we're going to do is grab the, our longer bolts in the kit, use a washer, and we're going to run that through our crush sleeve tool and then thread it into the crush sleeve itself. Now if that crush sleeve does not fit all the way into that 7 16 hole, what we may need to do is take a pair of pliers and just gently crimp down on it a little bit to where it will fit down. We'll drop that down into place. We have to give it a nice little tap. Now we're going to take a wrench to hold this in place and a half inch socket, and then we'll crush it down. Now we want to make sure we keep steady pressure down on, uh, on the bit to keep the crush sleeve straight. And then when we start to uh, crush it down, it'll go uh, quickly at first and then, uh, then get a little tougher. That's when we know that it's crushed down. Once it's crushed down, we just reverse it, take the bolt out, and our crush sleeve is installed. We we'll repeat that on all the rest of the holes. Now, since the back mounting location is not over top of one of the raised ribs, we're going to need some spacers to, uh, to make the difference, because if we just tighten it down, we can actually uh, cause the, the track to bind. So what we're going to do is take the bolt with a washer, set it in place, we're going to raise that up, put our washers in place. And we're just going to thread it in a little bit hand tight. Now that we've got all of our bolts in hand tight, we can go ahead and tighten all of, all of our hardware down, and then slide in the rest of the components. Now what we're going to do is take the secondary frame rail, and again, to have this uh, paddle turned down, you'll have your second set of hands. Turn that red uh, latch again. We can pull this all the way out. Next, we're going to take the sliding subframe, line it up to the base frame, and slide it in. Now we need to line up the tray to that sliding subframe. Now, we're going to need to have this held out of the way because it's spring-loaded, so what we can do is just slide a screwdriver into that and it'll hold it in place. Now I can go ahead and slide the tray in place. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the sides for the extension. We're going to do the sides first. Uh, the part towards the tailgate will have an angle cut out of it. We're going to take, it's got a little L kicked out from the side. We're going to drop that 
into the channel and rotate that up. And then we're gonna take and move our holes to line up. Once the holes line up, we're gonna take our Allen screw, run it through with a serrated flange nut on the back. We're just gonna put it then in there hand tight for right now. And repeat that on the other side. Now we're gonna take the bulkhead portion and we're gonna fasten that as well in the same fashion. We're gonna rotate that up and make sure these L brackets go to the outside of our side uprights. We can insert our Allen wrench, our Allen screws once we have all our hardware hand tight, we we'll want to go back uh, with the Allen wrench and tighten it all down. Now we're going to have a total of four adjustable tight on eyelets. What we're going to do is thread our carriage bolt through our plastic washer into the eyelet. The way that installs, it goes into that channel in the back of the rail. I'm going to slide that wherever we want it and tighten it down. That concludes the installation of the CargoGlide CG1500XL. If you have any questions, call the experts. We're here to help you out. <laughs>